Welcome to the IT Shed. You're watching CS50's Introduction to Programming with Python. Problems have four emojis. Emojis aren't always easy to type, so some programs support codes such as colon, thumbs up colon, which automatically converts that text to the emoji, in this case thumbs up. So here our program inputs, the user inputs thumbs up colons, and output is emoji thumbs up. The same down here is Earth's Africa, an emoji of the Earth is printed to the screen. So it's a pretty small program. So we're going to make our directory, then we're going to cd into our directory, and we're going to code emojis.py. And then we'll submit it with check 50 to see if we got everything up and running properly. Okay, the first thing we need to do is install our emoji package because it doesn't come pre-installed with Python. So we're going to use pip install and if you have any doubts just check the hints here. So pip install emoji. Let me just copy that. Okay now it's asking us to upgrade so we just copy what it says here. So pip install dash dash upgrade pip. Okay, now we're done. Okay, now that we have our emoji package installed, we're gonna to have to import it into our program. So we're gonna use the import keyword, and we're gonna import emoji. So if we look at our demo, we'll see that after calling the program, Python emoji.py, Input is printed to the screen, so that's the user prompt. So then the user types in code, in this case thumbs up, and that will output an emoji with thumbs up. Now as we'll see soon, part of the program also asks us to enable aliases. So it's the same thing, thumbs up, it's just an alias. So this has an underscore and that does not have an underscore. So that has to be implemented into our program too. So, point to note from this is we need to look for an input and that types input to the screen and then we output is going to output the word, the string output as well. So here we're going to take input from the user and I'm going to create a variable called prompt. I'm going to assign that to the input function. And remember the input is looking for just a string input. So that is our input function. So when the user inputs the code, it will be saved in the variable prompt. And you can call this anything you like, I'm just calling it prompt. Okay, how do we know where to go from here? Well, if we go to Google and I Google emojis, the first thing that comes up is emoji documentation. So here's what we know already. Pip install emoji, we did that. And down here is an example, so import emoji, we're after doing that as well. So here is print emoji that emojis. So this is our package we just installed, and this is called the module within the package. So if we go back here, and we print our um, mo our package emoji dot our module, as things stand, this isn't going to cut the mustard because this is just printing the uh, function to the screen. We need to actually access the user prompt. So the user is going to input something like thumbs up, which is the code and that's contained within the package here. So in order to access that, we're going to have to output it to the screen. To do this, we're going to use an F string. Now an F string is used to combine a string, which in this case could be output, because that's what they want to do on the CS50 assignment, with a variable, in this case prompt. So to access the prompt, we're going to use a curly braces. And uh, we're going to close it off here with the inverted commas. So we have the F here to denote an F string, and that's outside the inverted commas or the quotation marks, whatever you like to call them. And in here we have our variable which is contained in curly brackets. So now if I run the program, 
if I was to type the code, thumbs up. You see, we are outputted the thumbs up emoji, so that's working so far. However, if we were to run it with the alias, which is thumbs up without the underscore, so thumbs up, then it doesn't work. Okay, if we go back to our, our documentation, we'll see here, in order to get alias, we need to put a comma, language alias. So if I just copy that bit of code, and I bring it over to our program, paste it in. So I clear the screen, and run it again. So this is our alias without the underscore. And we have it perfect. To check if it is working properly, we'll check 50, copy that, bring it over to our program, paste it in. Okay, as we can see, we've got all greens. So the code worked. So it's a very small program and a short enough video and I thank you for watching it and I hope I see you in the next one.